Welcome to the show. It's Wednesday on Your View. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I never do this alone. Hi, ladies. Hello, Same crew yesterday. What happened? Yeah. The high was just. Uh -uh. Just happened. Uh -uh. Coincidental. Well, it was just correct. <laughs> <laughs> and the audience, hello. <laughs> Good to have you. Good to have you. Why can in the building? This yo, your yo, yo. Lovely. Oh, thank you very much. I've had it for a long time. My friend, she made me several like that. She had several made for me and she gave me. So I just said, because I like to wear to um, African okay. tops on Wednesdays. Oh, on Wednesdays? Yeah. You know, I didn't notice. All the time, I, thought. I, no, I, I didn't notice. No, I just, okay. just I day? just, I mean, I'm just trying to show that you, you can actually wear your this thing and still combine it trendy, with the other yeah, culture right. and make something. You know, I was telling Waiki earlier that nice. somebody has to take, take after Waiki, and I'm actually going to take after you. I'm going to do exactly Amen. what you're doing. So, Amen. Just, am I supposed to you? Just be ready for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. ready. I'm, ready. I'm very, very good at head time. So, <laughs> you, you know, you know, old age is knocking at my door very fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're going to hand over everything to me. Everything. Hand over to me. <laughs> so fantastic. Uh -uh. Right. I will do my retirement party at 60 here. Hmm? Really? Ah, uh, when I'm 60. Why you, you want me to still be waking up at 2 a.m.? Why K? Oh, don't go. Mm. I'm, I'm Please don't go. Please don't go. Don't go. Why K? You're two years to go, right? Yeah, two years to go. Wow. Two years to go. Why like K? You've done an amazing. No, you have to do a serious party for me. Your view. Party. We're, ah. we're locking down Lagos State. <coughs> we're locking. <coughs> we're shutting down Lagos, right? <coughs> Why K? Sixteen them. We're shut. They must do party for me. <laughs> we promise her that, definitely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. How some people would say, may God take us there, may you give us long life Amen. to see that day. Amen. Amen. Um, so for me, uh, I get a few people reach out to me concerning keto. And someone reached out to me, she said, she's struggling to be consistent. I said, sis, the same happens to me. In fact, I've just started again. I was like, oh, really? I just thought that you had made it a lifestyle. So I just want to say to everyone out there, you know, we all struggle one way or the other. But the thing is just to be consistent. So try and eat healthy. It doesn't have to be keto if you don't want it to be keto, you know. But you can eat healthy and exercise <laughs> and less exercises and, and so more exercises. I did it and she's, she's doing well. I did it yeah. also. I lost yeah. a lot of weight with keto. I mean, and um, it actually helped me. Throughout my pregnancy, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't gain one weight. Well, after, had... post, after I delivered, I started putting on the weight. But throughout my pregnancy, I didn't gain any weight at all. So it really, really helped me. Yeah, and then there's something the to be, a, yeah. Truly, no, I was pregnant. And something I've noticed that for the keto, there's so many benefits for me. And the person that also um, talked to me, she says she gets a lot more energy. Her skin is glowing. So there's so many health benefits for me. I think the weight loss is just like an added bonus. Right. So, mm. But yeah. that's for you. Some people mm. have mm. feel it has an adverse effect, though. So, you that, know, let's, yeah, but there are two arguments to this. <laughs> Some things there. My there bread. There's a future. <laughs> there's a future um, consequence to this. A diet we don't we don't know. Yeah. So hey, do do the best that do fits you. you. Yeah. How are you doing, Nima? James Bond. Looking at me. Uh, <laughs> because we love you. James Bond movement this morning. Traffic. What happened mm. today? Well, I, just, I just thank God for life. The way I drive. The way I drove this morning. I mean, sorry. I just forgot she was in the back with her baby. I mm. had to oh. be on. Over 16 speed down here because I just passed my two by 8:30. Mm. <laughs> How I made it here, only God knows. Only I ah, thank God. God well was done. following you, mm -hmm. in fact. I'm telling you. Yeah, I was now feeling in traffic that my mom didn't call me this morning. Did she not pray away traffic for me today? Aww. I didn't hey, call her. To, to, to the comedy side of things, I was discussing with my mom yesterday that I might visit her tomorrow since I'm off set. She was like, ah, No, I told her, me and your dad do. I know I told her, hey, Where emergency. You you have dentist appointment. Yeah. Said, ah. hey, whole dentist appointment. <laughs> I said, a dentist is not a serious matter. Ah, he's not serious for you. 
So, but that's rich people illness. Only yeah. rich people remember yeah. to keep dentists up. Ooh, just eat and use toothpick. Then, ooh, <laughs> ah, no, I have to take care of my teeth. Ah, your dad too. It does. I was just like, ah. And as you said, we were going to a hotel yeah. for a weekend. Yeah, I mean, dentist weekend. appointment. Right. Yeah. That's the kind of thing you have in your own head, That's the kind of thing you have in ah. your head. Meanwhile, they all spoke to me for shows. announcing my mishap yeah. yesterday on Sunday. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. so. That's so, so I've announced that I walked into a door. I mean, Mariah has talked about how squishy your they things are. About I mean, oh so, goodness. I mean, oh you, that part of me is, is, is public knowledge. Can we talk about your hair? Oh, thank okay. you. Okay. It's well, lovely. Yeah. And they are quite <laughs> if you let me talk on this table, <laughs> if you allow me to talk on this table, why can talk now? Let hmm. me just keep quiet. Just uh, keep quiet. Oh my God, there's more. Quiet. This too. To my mood. My audience, how are you, Jare? How are you, Gibi? Thank you for coming. I heard we have a set of twins in the building. Oh. Yeah. Are they identical? Please, please stand up for recognition. Ah, uh, come wow. on. Hey. Hey. Together, but well, you're dressed alike, so what's the point? It's my friend. Can they sit together? Assalamu alaikum. Yes, Don't worry. I don't need Lara. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the newspaper. Stay with us, we'll be right back. So thank you very much for coming back. So I forgot to mention, Cream Slices gave us again a beautiful cake. Thank you so much. Please visit hashtag Cream Slices on Instagram to get um, your cake orders. I mean, they've been very consistent, been help helping us out. And Yummy Legend, Yummy Legend actually, has promised to give us small chops every ah. last Wednesdays. Not yeah. today, Shaq. Oh, every last Wednesday. Even, even if it's one Wednesday in a year. But let's thank okay. you very much. Yes. Yes. Every last Wednesday. That's fantastic. Thank you so much to Yemi. Let me know the Wednesday so that I'm on the show. In fact, I have to be on set. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start with um, the nation. <clears throat> Fear over 23 Nigerians on death row in Saudi Arabia. How ministry's late response led to execution of Nigerian? Consul General writes minister. And let me just um, read out a few names of those on mm -hmm. uh, jail, mm -hmm. not on death row. Halimat Oyebanjo Oyaya, Halima Isa, Limata Hamed, Rama Abdul Karim, Mariam Ibrahim Tanko, Bolaji Kende, Olubu Miade um, Ola Nion, Olubalan Lefunke, and Yasirat. Others, these are all, they are all jailed right now in Saudi Arabia. From 15 for, to 4 years. Yes, yes. For, um, for drug trafficking. Yeah. Another story here, bank shut down in Ondo communities. Monarchs indicted in Northwest violence and abductors demand three millionaire for fire chief. Okay, let's talk about this Saudi Arabia story. I know uh, yes. Mariam has the details, yes. yes. So the um, uh, Nigerian Consular General Ambassador MS Yunusa has said that what may have contributed to the death, to the execution of the Nigerian lady could have been, is, he believes is the slow response of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to the letters he had written them in December 2018 and also February 6, 2019. But he says that we, um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs seems to be diplomatically slow, you know, in responding to issues like this. But then there has been an investigation by NDLEA and the police uh, force in Keno State, which is the, uh, and then they found out that in the Malang Aminu Keno International Airport, that's Compromise. the international airport in Keno, yes. that they found out that there's sort of like a, a, a drug cartel, a syndicate, the where they, the yes, people. where they move you know, drugs uh, using um, particulars of unsuspecting travelers, you know, they'll put tram a door, all sorts of things. And that the thing is at an all time high. So you have people who are jailed, who are being executed for, for crimes that they did not Nothing commit. About. He mentioned yeah, Ethiopian airline. He said the officials in Ethiopian mm -hmm. airline and <clears throat> Egyptian airline are known to be part of this. New Telegraph. Federal government says traditional rulers aiding bandits in Zamfara and others. Over, two, two, uh, and five, over 3,500 people killed, 500 villages destroyed in Zamfara. <clears throat> Police tear gas INEC ad hoc staff who protested non payment of allowance, and dogs can sniff out cancer in blood. Hmm, who has that story? So let me take the um, INEC staff. Um, <clears throat> in Enugu, INEC ad hoc staff protested non payment of their, of their entitlements. 
and because of the crowds, they had to involve the police um, to, you know, to control the crowd. And they are alleging that INEC refused to pay them. They are not treating them uh, nicely. But the resident electoral commissioner for Enugu State is saying no, that some of them were not even, you know, later I absorbed into INEC to work with INEC. Yes, maybe they had done screening and they were not, their names didn't appear, didn't appear but they are protesting payment after not working. Some people, you know, went ahead to join even though they were not called to work. And so those are the people that are not paid. And then he blamed um, um, NYSE or local government officers for setting other payments. But I would love that they look into the genuineness of some cases and pay those people who's, um, who have genuine demands. Right. Pay them because it's, 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 what, what do they say? A, a laborer's sweat should not dry up before his, uh, yeah. his uh, I have the dog, the dog story. Yeah, yeah. so scientists in um, America, of course, I found out that there's this, they've trained this breed of dogs called beagles. They're like, uh, they're like hounds. They are known for their really high sense of smell. And usually um, what they do is that they, they, they can smell, yeah, they sniff like hairs, rabbits and things like that. So they have a high sense of smell. So they're used now to detect um, cancer in blood. So what happens is that instead of that invasive way that you draw, uh, you, you check, cancer, you know, what sort of cancer that you have. The dog is able to sniff the blood and detect if it's lung cancer, if it's breast cancer, and that the, so far, this is 97% accurate. accurate. So, um, well done well for done this. For you know, this, this story, yeah. this story, my friend's mother died of cancer. cancer. Mm -hmm. She went to one of the Caribbean islands for um, a holiday, and this dog would not just leave her alone. And we kept smelling the same place. Keep she got it. home, within a month she was diagnosed with cancer. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine? And you know, she, the, my friend kept saying, I don't know why this dog will not leave my mother alone. Oh, wow. You know, so this story really, yeah, really seems yeah. very, yeah, 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 it makes sense to me. All right, <clears throat> moving on to the punch. Killings in North, AFC meets today, as Minister says, yes, top yeah. traditional, sorry, AFC, that's Arewa Consultative Forum, meets today, as Minister says, top traditional rulers aiding bandits. Mm. Gunmen kill businessman during a robbery operation in Lagos. Pro Buhari Group asks security agencies to investigate Atiku. <clears throat> INEC says distribution of uncollected PVCs to resume soon. Amosun Shetima meet over Senate presidency. And police dismiss nine officers for misconduct. This businessman that was killed, um, it was later, I think 2 a.m., um, uh, uh, one of his neighbors saw a man trying to scale the fence with the torchlight, trying to... Hmm. Um, beckon to others to come along, and they try to steal, um, I think it's inverter batteries. Yeah. Mm. Wow. And so this person who saw the, the who saw these armed um, mm -hmm. robber alerted this gentleman, this businessman, and another man, Afiz. They both came out, mm. and then this man shot um, this Abudu mm. on the head immediately. Oh. I know they weren't, they weren't really, sh they, they weren't really sure if he was dead or so until 7 a.m. in the morning when they saw his- Nobody could come out, they were all afraid. Oh, and he was, he was still speaking, no? Yes. So can you imagine if they had taken him earlier? So he, that happened around 2 a.m., but they didn't see mm. him until 7 a.m. I rushed mm -hmm. him to Laguna Hospital in Kedja, and unfortunately... Oh. You see how unfair died. it seems that immediately he was called, he came out, but no one could come out to save yeah. him. Yeah, you know? so nobody could, it was really sad, really ah. sad. So the... Um, the General, so you want to take yes. a punch? Um, the Minister for Defence, Brigadier General Mansour Dang Ali, was saying that um, the fight against insurgency in Zamfara, it's not just a military thing, you know, it has to be done okay. with you know, with the um, co um, contribute, yeah, co um, collaboration with the communities. And they are talking about, he, he mentioned a few traditional rulers who have been known to give, um, you know, intelligence to the bandits. Right. So they would make plans, military would make the uh, efforts to, to do something. And before you know it, the bandits have intelligence right. on what they're supposed right. to do. But I just wanted to say, he said this, he says it is instructive to mention here that insurgency and terrorism, he said this, he says it is instructive to mention here that insurgency and terrorism are a global phenomena that cannot be addressed through military actions only. The whole society has to rise in unison to support the government's efforts to address the problem. Yeah. So you know so, how we normally say, what is the government doing? You guys, we need to also keep asking ourselves, what are we doing? What are you, what are you, what are you, governor, yeah. has the- What are you going to do? 
the... We'll, we'll start at least by okay. not go giving there. intelligence go to bandits. Governor Yari go has uh, <laughs> details of the number of people. I mean, yeah. he said yeah. over 3,000 people have died. That's as far as we've heard. Right. I would expect more from him before right. his exactly. uh, expires. Oh, ah, ah. Hey, me, I don't have, I don't have anything. Yeah, what do you want me to mean, go and do there? Don't just take intelligence and give bad people. Don't tell them this is what the military is planning to do. For me, I would never do that now. And so that's what we're saying. But there are some people that are doing that, and they are traditional rulers. Okay, let's move on to Vanguard. Don't Mike is just pulling your name. So I know. <laughs> Vanguard. Afeni Ferry Ohane is a pandem others tackle Buhari on insecurity. Lagos Transition Committee inaugurated yesterday. Aviation Union disrupts activities at Lagos Airport. Onogen, Nima's daddy. <laughs> IPOB accuses NGC <laughs> of bias. Papa's <laughs> uncle. <laughs> Ex Deputy <laughs> Governor sues Ondo government over non payments of entitlements. No room for laziness in my cabinet, Miami warns commissioners and advisors. Oshimbajo charges NDIC to tackle non payment of um, loans in banks. Kidnappers of fire service boss demands 200 million naira ransom. Hmm. Okay, who has any story in Vanguard? The, the, the kidnappers, I have the story. So oh, the they, fire chief. Yeah, we, we were dis debating whether they made demands yesterday, and today the Vanguard reported that they actually mm. made a 50 million naira demand for the um, fire service boss, mm. and 150 for the others, one co for the others. And um, they also agreed to a possible reduction in their demands, mm, but, but they've not stated the much. exact amount yet. But the CP for Lagos, as um, Zuberu Muazu, now I have your name, I put together this um, <laughs> the team against them uh, and the kidnapping team, yeah. and I've mandated that they do the needful to get them. They, they are claiming that they are on the tail of the kidnappers. Mm. We hope that it is a result before anything All happens. Right. They are saying they might not, the kidnappers are saying they will not kill, but they will treat harshly. All right, Governor Fayemi is saying that he would not hesitate to sack any cabinet member found wanting or involved in unwholesome practice um, of ineptitudeness. So he's saying that, listen, this is, this, he's going to work. And my, my mother-in-law traveled to Ikiti and he, he, you could see that, listen, this guy is not playing. A okay. lot of work is ongoing in Ikiti right now. Development-wise. Development-wise, oh, the whole world. Well everybody just seemed, because she went to the ministry to get something done and within 20, 15 minutes she was Fantastic. done. She was like, ah, this is very unusual, mm. <laughs> you know? So mm. things are changing and I'm happy, you know, I, this, yeah. is, I think this is last We're term, happy right? happy for you people. So I'm happy that things are moving up in Ikiti. <laughs> Daily Sun. <laughs> More trouble for APC over zoning. Let's find a story we have not taken. ICPC arrests three rectors oh. with 10 million naira bribe money. Hmm. Oshimbajo gives NDIC marching orders on, sanit on bank sanitization. And I think that's the only story. You have the rector's again. story. I do. Yes, okay, yeah, ah, please. I have that story. Too. Yeah, right. so the spokesperson for ICPC, Rashida. It's not on colleges, right? Not on universities. No, either. and there's a, uh, the other places too, in uh, the Southwest, okay. just a mixture okay. of them. Uh, they arrested three rectors and some other top uh, management staff. And the thing is, they, they were, a whistleblower had reported to ICPC that they had cash of over 10 million on them, which they had gotten from sort of a bribery transaction. I read all the other papers. I could not tell exactly what, what the, the transaction, transaction was, was about, but the ICPC was able to arrest them. A few of them are at large. They ran away, but this one, mm. the three of them have been caught. We have, to run, them. Up. We have to run up, but there's a story that caught my attention in Tribune where, where Governor Kurocha was saying that the South East should forget presidency in 2023. I didn't really like that article, but I didn't, I didn't read it. I wish I read it. Yeah, okay. the one that I liked was, uh, well, the, the police had sacked some people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they sacked about um, nine people and demoted some. Mm. Nine yeah. police officers. All right, from, that's from all we can take on Front Page Review. When we come back, we'll discuss trending topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Yes, so, thanks for staying with us. So a story that's been trending all over social media, that got singer, songwriter Simi, who reacted on the negative impact the activities of Yahoo Boys have on genuine Nigerians seeking international opportunities. And um, she doesn't need them to buy her music, she told them. However, a lot of Nigerians have reacted to what she said, and still reacting. What are your thoughts on this? Watch this clip first. I mean, see me, Prince 16. See me, please leave your old boy alone. Most of them are the ones buying your CDs. Even go far watching your video on YouTube. 
If that is what you want to use to hold me down, don't buy my CD and don't watch my video. If you want to stay in, because your whole boys are buying your CDs. If it is wrong, it is wrong. Stop, stop glorifying it because, because if I don't even get it, like it doesn't make any sense. And they even have the one that they're doing and they're using jazz to do it. And so now we find a way. I saw a video of somebody that I supposedly knew. You can call us on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. All right. What Simi said obviously is not new. We know that a lot of Nigerians are spoiling us outside there. And um, But was it right for her to be specific and saying, oh, it's Yahoo boys? Are they the only ones spoiling us out there, saying, making it difficult for international for, for all the Nigerians mm. to get international access? But people have come at time saying, listen, it was wrong for you to say that. Um, and it is, it's going all over social media. I would like to hear your thoughts. Who would like to go mm. first? Nima, go ahead, please. So fraud is such a serious offense that the damage it causes is worse than, you know, um, stealing and all the other small, small <coughs> crimes Nigeria could do abroad. The, the reason is because someone could be sitting somewhere in far away those states in one room and be destroying the image of Nigeria such that one or two persons abroad would think every Nigerian is sitting somewhere and doing this. There was a video that surfaced online of an, an American woman who tailed her stutter all the way right. to Ondo State. And when the, she found him, all the boys were like nine of them in one room sleeping together. And he was still chatting with her on the phone. And he didn't know she had you know, used some uh, GPS or something like that to tail him down here. Right. The damaging effect also is what Simi tried to talk about. How it, it's easy for them to now generalize all Nigerians. And before one person would be able to defend and say, I am different, it would have de destroyed the opportunities that that person, all of us, would be able to, would have wanted to have to do things, especially because we every day, our, our, gov our government is outside the country. Last week, uh, yesterday, uh, the president was speaking to UAE investors saying, come and make it here in Nigeria. Everybody's calling one investor or the other. Nigerians have opportunities. There are other Nigerians who sit in their bedroom, struggling every day, finding opportunities of how they can export or do business with partners abroad. And because of this generalization, mm. they cannot grow their businesses. Some people have said that. Some people have said that. Listen, yes, Yahoo boys are giving us a bad name, but all the politicians are also equally giving us bad names. Hey, Taking our money from here, difference. throwing it, throwing it to the, um, in the foreign banks, developing their own economy. People look at you, oh, you're coming here and you buy big cars. You want to buy a house and you cash down. But the chance pay cash down. I want you. Where did people get the money from? Yeah. So there is, a is, this, is it fair? To just say, okay, these boys are hustling, yeah, but is, is, is that fair? hustle? That, that's not a hustle, actually. It's, it's wrong. It's a, it's a wrong hustle yeah. because it's illegal and it's, it's, and it's a crime. It's there is a street in Knightsbridge that they call the Nigerian street. You see, Nigerians, they are politicians' houses. You will shake your leg, your head like this because you, now your left leg, you they take wakani. Right. <laughs> so that's what people are going at her, that is it fair to just say it's only the Yahoo boys, that the no. rich ones you suppose we are attacking, we are silent on those, but it's comfortable to attack the, the Yahoo boys okay. alone. So what do you say to that? What I say to that is that a crime is a crime is a crime. Regardless and it does you. not matter the name of the crime. So Simi has come out here to talk about a crime. It does not make the other crimes less, you know, bad or less more criminal. or more criminal or less criminal. So she's talking about this. And a lot of people, and I, I was saying to Mariah earlier, what she said for me is just obvious. We know it's a crime, it's bad. It's like saying the sky is blue, the sky is blue. Do you understand? What struck me really were the conversations, the, the comments that people were making. I mean, there used to be a time in Nigeria when you would accuse someone of doing something wrong. And even if they did it, they would lie to say, I am not the person or I don't do it. Hmm. But now we come out gone. boldly to say, yeah. yes, we do it and justify, and justify it. it. So that is my fear. Hmm. And the thing is, with Yahoo, Yahoo, people think is, well, we're hustling, we're trying to make ends meet. It's not. There, there are victims for every crime. As long, it's not a victimless crime. As long as there are victims, as long as there are people losing money. Mm -hmm. You're saying, because I heard there are some comments that said they are not on the street carrying guns, but it's almost the same thing. Some people have died because of these activities. Yeah. You know, yeah, people have so. lost livelihood savings for years and years. Mm -hmm. So th the thing is, it is wrong completely, and you cannot compare one crime with the other as long as you're hurting people. Mm -hmm. the, the, the truth of it is, the Yahoo boys are there doing their own thing. Simi is bringing up the issue again, which we know. But what exactly is the next phase? Is it for young people to take responsibility and say, listen, the same way um, we were talking yesterday that 
the, the our guest yesterday saying that uh, we should try to push people out there to tell to go and go, go get checked in the hospitals. Same thing. Let young people name and shame their colleagues. That okay, you are doing Yahoo. Arrest them. Send them to the police. Or what exactly? What's, what, what, where is this conversation leading us to? No, should we shame each other? What like what <laughs> Miriam talked about? This conversation Simi had with the people who replied the, um, the post on her pages just showed that you know some somebody has cost us, I don't know how to put it, with a different mentality of what wealth, arrival, mm. and, and, and uh, achievement is. What so, success is. Uh, what success is. So these boys make money. Nothing is reinvested, wasted. Yeah. Take it, waste it, right. live that life, right. and people celebrate that mediocrity. Let me come to the no, audience. Can I, before you go to the audience, right. I want to take it from another level. Because we are when we talk about this, my father had this song that said, teacher, don't teach me nonsense. Mm. Our teachers are our government. Mm. Once you see that you celebrate, in this Nigeria, we celebrate criminals. Yeah. We celebrate government thieves. Yeah. When you will see somebody, you will see that he is making money from our own sweat. He has oil block. Who, who is he to have an oil block? What he has oil block. Doing? He has money. Then he comes in here, and all of us are saying, hey, hey, sorry, sir, we're done. Why? Why? It's, if we start to name and shame those ones first, stop hailing them, then we can go down to the, because those ones are only living by example. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I think we can end with that. Let's go on a break. The show will continue after this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. All right, thank you for staying with us. Before we introduce our guests, let me take a few comments from the audience. Yes, somebody has something to say concerning the Simi. Okay, let Go me ahead. say this. To me, I feel that Simi is just scratching, or how will I put it? She's just scratching, the, scratching surface. the surface. Like that. We, I go to their shoes, all these artists, their shoes. You see them, table for five, 10 million. Era. It's Yahoo okay. Boys that mm. buy it, to be honest. Their industry night is being sponsored by Yahoo Boys. Most of their uh, record labels, their albums, are being donated. The donations, the highest donations, are from Yahoo Boys. And they don't complain during this time. I don't know the reason why she's speaking out now. But to me, I feel like it's just scratching the surface. Because in other countries, the way the Europeans dealt with it is by engaging the youth. Now they are closing down prisons. Youth, 21 million people unemployed in Nigeria. So what is the hope for the youth? Are we other go to Yahoo now than stay at home and not have a job. So I feel that they should tell the government, if the government provide more jobs, engage more youth, there's more youth empowerment, who will want to do Yahoo? Who will want to do it? Okay? There's no justification for There's no dignity crime. in crime. Mm -hmm. There's no dignity. If you have self-worth, these are not options. Mm -hmm. We are not seeing government as in failed. We are not seeing government has done the right thing. And Simi did something. She said, do not buy my music. She has called them out. Sure. Don't buy my tables. Don't, don't patronize me with these monies. And she, th by that, she's also calling on her colleagues to do the needful, to do the right thing. There's no dignity, no self-worth in this. I, we I, cannot I, continue I, this yes, trend. Like it. yeah, it's not sustainable. I, 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 what I was just saying is, the thing is, as Nigerians, we have uh, money is our God. If you have money, you are a king. Simple. You are poor, you are nothing. So if, if money is our God, a young person like Marvelous now, how would he, he's, all he's thinking about is how do I get this money? money. Exactly. So I get the love necessary. and the respect that you give Nigerians who have well, money, however. Money, it doesn't come with the respect. I know people who are rich and they, 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 they wish they desire that power, influence, and respect, but they don't have it. No, all they have is this paper no, no, called cash. No, that is no, not that's true. What saying. That's not that, true. Is not, that is what I'm saying. Yeah. That when you come here and you have money, no matter how you got the money, You'll be respected. No, you will be respected. Why? Because you have the money to spend. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have money, they look at you. Oh, who is this Akushe? Mm -hmm. That's what they say. OK, let me, this let, me take, well. let me take Let me take. this one more comment from the audience. Go ahead, sir. I think the problem of all these Yahoo boys is just because of the situation in Nigeria. If the economy is good, everything is working fine. I don't think people will be thinking about you because they say an idle mind is a lazy mind. So you yeah, see, we, can young, we, we need to understand, hear young people that yeah. are talking. They are telling us exactly the same thing over and over again. Yeah, okay. They are giving us the same excuses. which is the same thing their colleagues are saying. 
Okay. So let's not act as if it's not there. It's there. Okay, but for me, I feel it's an excuse because before you called it Yahoo, before your age mate, they used to call it 419. Yeah. Old papas used to do it. And economy was better then. Mm -hmm. So there's always a reason for crime. There's always an excuse that you, you give for crime. Look, well, you as a human being, you need to make that choice for yourself. Yes. You can either be on this side or on the other side. Can you I say something? You will have a church. The pastor, the owner of the church, his wife, Assistant pastor. Wait, He's wait, no, 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 no. I no, I, I, no, I don't want to. I'm not knocking churches. I'm not knocking churches. Okay. The son is something, something. The daughter is. They are all collecting money from the poor people. <laughs> from the poor people. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. Those poor people, excuse me, those poor people that are funding those churches do not have access. To the pastors. We are changing, we are, we are changing the conversation. I'm not. Okay, I am telling you, I'm saying that this problem of money is our God. It's the problem. Two young men say, we have no choice. We have to do this. That's what the options we have. Mm. And that young man is saying he has a brother who has traveled abroad. Who has suffered who the repercussions of that decision. The repercussions of that decision. So, so in that case, what, what do you I, want? When I travel, if I want to get, if I want to rent an apartment, yeah. or I want to, once they see I, I'm a Nigerian, they will not rent it to me. Let's take a few more tweets, Wanky. Okay, Do you understand? Let me take a few. No, it's not the only I'm, them. I'm, I'm, if we're all suffering it. Right, Nima, go ahead. Andrew Street, I'm saying. I'll let you add that point. I've also been insulted by some stupid Nigerians concluding, because I am a programmer working online, they generalize that I am Yahoo. It's very annoying. And um, Uyi Egon says, I agree with Simi. She chose to speak about the fraud. The problem is with people trying to justify it. It's quite appalling, this Yahoo boys. What this, uh, these Yahoo boys are becoming a menace to us as a people and the country. We are and all affected. Right, right. Do we keep says, quiet because politicians are complacent mm. to... Okay, um, and he says, our government are our teachers. True, Nigeria wasn't always like this. We took this turn under IBB when people were suddenly becoming millionaires mm. overnight due to connection to generals and the youth took note. Mm. Okay, so simple. simple. That's, simple. that's the problem. Bam, yeah. bam. But then he also says... Uh, that, okay. Everything. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we we we, are, we have a, we have a header. Yes, Simi has done her bit, but exactly. it starts a conversation. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, it's obvious that young people feel that it's an excuse to get mm -hmm. into Yahoo because hey, there's poverty in the land. Others are saying, listen, you're doing that, but it's affecting every other person who is doing so this a legit, legitimate business with the, with the foreigners. Okay, we have to move on because we started the conversation uh, concerning the Futo students last week. Mm -hmm. These students who allegedly took drugs in order to enjoy group sex. On the show today, we'll be discussing with another guest on how to curb the usage of drugs amongst young, young people again. Joining us is a clinical psychologist, Synapse versus Chinelu Linda Okeke. Welcome to the show. <laughs> so, still on young people again, we've just talked about Yahoo. We can always, I'd also like, like to mm -hmm. hear your thoughts on the issue of young people getting into Yahoo, but let, let's start with the drugs part for it, which is your own area of strength. You heard this photo thing that happened, and three, three young boys and a young lady have passed on um, after taking Dramadol, codeine, and with vodka. Now, with vodka? With vodka. Yes. And they had a group sex. Suicide and I know you've been involved in a project to help um, rehabilitate young people from drugs. What has been your experience, what have been your experience like so far? Uh, it's been interesting and at the same time um, shaky. Uh, I would say um, on daily basis, we get reports from young people uh, who have um, substance use addiction problem. And um, with the Yahoo problem and the joblessness and the way our society is being shaped these days, uh, we have more youth reporting uh, substance use addiction and, um, and every other addiction that we have there. Let me go on a quick break. When I come back, I'd like you to share real stories of people you've met, how they started, and what, what caused it, and how far they've come so far with, with healing. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Staying with us. So we're, we're focusing a lot on young people today. I mean, yes, getting to Yahoo and also getting to drugs, sex, and, and the whole works. And because you, you help to rehabilitate, I would really like you to share real story because I want parents who are watching now mm -hmm. to understand somewhat of where the genesis of this came mm -hmm. from and what they can do to help 
these young people? Oh, okay. Um, owing to my experience with working with people going through addiction problem or substance use disorder, um, you can't pinpoint particularly to a, a particular problem that is the cause of substance use or the right. genesis of, of it. But uh, the common ones that uh, we noticed is uh, one of them is the rave, like wanting to feel among, you, you, you want to feel um, on top to of it. In. Yes, I want to fit in, I want to be like my friends, mm -hmm. I want to be the coolest guy or girl on campus oh, or Jesus. in life. And uh, another thing we also notice is uh, parents absenteeism. Like before we have parents who, who goes as far as checking the way you sit, the way you talk, the way you move, the things you do. But mm. we have our parents um, going after something else like mm. money, comfort for their children. I'm not saying it's all bad, but um, it's, it's troubling that we forget our That's own position as, mm. uh, as parents. Yes. Uh, not only that as well, um, the pop culture, the social media also helps mm. glamorize this. So mm. when you, you imagine you want to turn on your TV and the next thing you're seeing is um, musicians glorifying uh, smoking, drinking, and it's okay for young people because um, you are not there, the adults are not there to correct and say, okay, what you're seeing is just music. You don't necessarily have to go into it. So with all this, you know, in view. Yeah, right. You yeah. know, I'm just happy that you talked about the parents' role in the whole of this thing because a lot of times we, we tend to blame just our economy or we blame the government and i always wonder like what is it that we're doing wrong now what is it that parents now are not doing that parents then did because i think from what you're saying is that we have it more now there are a lot more young people so the question i think for all of us really is what is important for us are we running after our careers and how do we manage both but have you seen any way where a parent has been able to now be part of that child's life and reverse, reverse the, the situation? situation? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I, I would commend a lot of parents um, that have taken the bold step to come out. Like uh, where I work at Sign Up Services, we not only um, rehabilitate, we operate a multi, um, multidisciplinary approach to treatment where we collaborate with family, with psychiatrists, with nurses, with everyone involved in, in um, social care. Because there's hope. Yes, so there is hope, there is. And uh, when we work together with parents and and um, the other team members in rehabilitation. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me go to the audience because I would like to hear from, because I really want this show to be about them. I want to hear um, your experiences with drug abuse you can, uh, and um, these usages. And have you heard of these issues of group sex that, it, that, that young people get involved in? Let me come to you, yes. Really, let me, me uh, I really want to start from the foundation. Okay. Like she said, parents. Our parents should be more alert now. We should correct at every minute. We should not stop talking. Like me, I have my daughters. When she's not sitting right, I said, look, you're not sitting right. I don't like the way you work in the morning. You should be sharp. And anybody that, I tell her, anybody's playing with your part of the body, your part of the body is not a toy. Hmm. You yourself should not play with it. Don't let anybody play with it. Okay. So I, we keep talking. We, we have to talk to the guy. Right. Let me let me get somebody, but I also want let me take this call and I'll come to Nima. Um hello, are you there? <coughs> hello. Good morning, Chidi. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. I love this conversation. I really love it. Thank you, sir. What I'm trying to say is that we should not condemn only Yaru alone. <laughs> so people are doing all sorts of things, all manner of things, just to achieve wealth. What I'm trying to say is that we should condemn it. Anything that is evil, generally, right. not only Yahoo. Mm -hmm. Do you know that some there are some there are, there are, there are some contractors that they will give contract. They will not execute the contract. They will give the money and run away. Yes. Is it not bad? It is bad. Are, are, are happening everywhere. It's terrible. I'm not necessarily advocating that parents have to give up their means of livelihood right. because definitely, if you, you neglect take taking care of your children, uh, they will end up on the streets regardless. But hmm. um, we have programs that are designed to help children like the parents can enroll 
their words mm -hmm. yes into programs that ensures that they have someone to talk to even if my parents is not there i yes, have yes. someone i can reach out to who's going to help me deal with problems because if you look at it a substance use a problem addiction uh, um, as a whole is um people adopt it as a means to cope with other life challenges. And you'll be wondering, what are these children face, facing? They are too young. But the truth of the matter is they are going through a lot. A lot. All right, let me, let me talk to one, 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 somebody from the audience. Go ahead, please. Yeah, um, it's a bad thing happening, actually, about this drug and everything taking in. Um, people don't understand what this stuff does to their body. Mm. We're only going to school to learn we are not educated about what we put in. Hmm. Okay. You see, alcohol alone, not in just one percent. It takes about forty days to get detoxified from your system, hmm. and people take bottles in and feel happy. You are killing yourself slowly. You would rather die Shut once up. than put yourself on a slow <laughs> death row. Dying, and by the time you grow old, you are paying all your life savings to hmm. get back to get back your life health. again. Hmm. Why are you taking drugs when you can stop your heart in one second? Taking drugs, please. Eat hmm. food. You have pain. Go for ginger. Yeah. Yes, right. go for ginger. Go for garlic. Yeah. Detoxify. Cleanse yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you see that you are having. You can even perform more as using that three times. Okay. Yes. Let, me take, yeah. let me take this love of Yakub. Yakub, are you still there? Yeah, Marion. Go ahead, yes. please. Yeah, good morning to you all out there. Good morning, Marion. Marion, quickly. Let me just give you a, a story very, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, one of my co cool landlord in my area. One before day, this man came back from the walk. And then the man took uh, eight capsules of uh, tramadol. Yes. And then none of us knew. When in the midnight, if I begin to cry, please help, help. My wife wake me up, say, I like to go out. If something is happening at the gate. When I go to their place, this man is already stiff. You cannot mm. afford his hand, you cannot afford anything. But I don't know that this man took uh, eight cups of tramadol. I quickly started my car. I picked this man towards hospital. When we got to hospital, we brought this man out of my car. Do you know when we got to hospital? Because of the hair that is already blow this man. In answer, in answer allergy, I, I'm sorry. Yesterday, I wanted to go and have a nice time with one lady. And then I took eight uh, cups of tramadol, but the lady no show up. And then I came back to that girl in the hospital. I say, you took Pamado, you said yes. I just leave the man at the premises of the hospital and go back home. Midnight. When I go back to the house, I tell my wife, never wake me up when this man is, is shouting again. Because what this man wants to tell his children, a, a man, a landlord, took in the eight capsule of Tramado because he wants to have sex with another lady, and then the lady did not show up. And then he came back you, home, Jay. and then he wants to help me, help me, help me. Thank you, Yaku. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jacob. <laughs> Jacob will not kill me. Since you did this um, rehabilitation, yeah. how often do you have cases of relapse? How is it easy for you to rehabilitate, or do you have cases of relapse at all? Um, oh. Usually, our treatment is, um, procedure is individualized because mm -hmm. everyone, we are all unique uh, mm -hmm. in what we approach um, on, and how to approach a particular um, problem. So, um, so far, I would say, averagely, there is a huge success rate for those who first agree that there is a problem. Okay. If you agree that there is a problem, then the uh, rehabilitation process is easier. For the relapse cases we've gotten, it's mostly um, uh, from people who are still struggling between um, acceptance and non-acceptance. Mm -hmm. So we, we call it contemplation stage. Those who are at contemplating um, change, who are contemplating change, oh, do I, do I want to change? Do I not want to change? So with that, um, the relapse rate is higher in those uh, people. But so far, I would say that there have been tremendous progress for those people who willingly work in right. for treatment. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that young people are going through a lot. I understand the rave that you talk about, which is um, young people want to fit in. But what are the other things that young people are going through that's making them seek drugs? Um, one of them is emotional uh, distress and inability to manage distress. Um, this day, um, there are lots of uh, things going on and um, how to solve them. They don't understand how to solve problems or understanding that um, sometimes I'll be happy, some days I'll be sad. Mm. But you, you, you find out that young people are looking for, I want to be happy Constantize. all day. Constantize, yes, yeah. yes. Mm. You, you see them, I want to 
constantly happy and have the euphoria. They don't understand that sometimes there will be days you will not yeah. be happy. That, that we some have days, to. Unfortunately, yeah. we have to go on a break. But thank you so much for sharing your experience with mm -hmm. us. Uh, we'll be bringing in a social worker next. Hopefully, he can help us understand how to work through this issues of social distress, uh, emotional distress that our young people go through, and what parents can do to help their lads. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Staying with us. So social work is rarely organized in this part of the world, uh, but overseas is a career. Now, we're going to be talking about how social work can better help young people to live better lives. Joining us on the show is the director of Children's Social Care London UK, Alexander Kobenje. 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 Yeah. Welcome, so before we go into social work as a career, I'd like to hear your thoughts on what work can be done concerning young people's involvement in drug abuse, mm. um, substance abuse, and um, even illegal uh, activities like Yahoo Yahoo. Mm. Uh, what went wrong or what can you do? What, what can that job as social work do to help us fix this problem in Nigeria? I think w when we talk about social work, it's, it's, it's a collective of services. Um, it's not just social work standalone. Okay. So I think a lot of our children spend most of their time at school so a lot of training has to go in with school and the parents because some of the signs and the behaviours will, will, will show within school. So are your teachers in Nigeria, are they trained to be able to identify mm. when something's going wrong for a child? Because ch other than being in the family home, they spend most of their time at school. school. So it's how do you work with the parents and the schools? And it's training, it's a lot of training that you need to be able to identify the signs and then you need to be able to have a response. So um, psychologists, I believe over there, was talking about how they work and it's about when a school identifies that a child with a parent, that, that the behaviour is starting to change. Mm -hmm. It's about what's, what is the support mechanisms, mechanisms you put in place to be able to support. When we talk about, you know, Yahoo, I'm not so familiar with Yahoo. I'm from the generation of 419. Mm -hmm. But it's quite... It's, the same, the same it's, quite, it's, it's, it's the same thing, isn't it? It's just, and so on. It seems like just a modern kind of version of it. And I think it's about what are the opportunities for young people. Um, people, have, people have to eat. They have, have to, to live. Engaged. They have to live, you know? And it's about what is the government doing to give them different kind of opportunities um, to divert them from that type of behaviour and it's about what are the consequences for this behavior? Because I think Annie was talking about we, that in Nigeria we celebrate some of these behaviors. And actually, if you're celebrating these behaviors, it, it's, it, it looks sexy, right. it looks right. attractive. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, never. that what are the signs that you know a child, a, perfect, a child in a perfect home, balanced home setting, what are the signs that the parents could spot to, you know, to know that you know, they were deviating or into drugs or relying on drugs for anything? And, you know, I thought you, you said, you know, the teachers should also know these signs. What are those signs that you know? So some of the signs that, that cause some of these things is about, if you, if you have a child, for example, who is normally quite pol polite, aggression starts to come into it. Mm. Money starts to go missing. Uh, Jewellery and other things start to go missing. They start to tell a lot of lies. So if they're meant to be, I don't know, at school, you realise they're not at school, they're somewhere, they're somewhere else. They start to lose weight, they start to sleep a lot, um, they become quite agitated. Um, the type of friends that they had before, they're not with those friends no more, they have a new set of friends. friends. So those are some of the signs that you have to look out for. And what I would suggest to parents is always know what your child is doing. Right. Check their room, check their, if they have bank accounts, try and check where the money is going. Check their wardrobes, go into their bags, have a good relationship with teachers. Mm. Now, is this like physical, physical abuse? abuse? I need to clarify. Mm -hmm. Define mm -hmm. physical mm -hmm. abuse. Is it slap like this? Oh. Or <laughs> pass? <laughs> or carrying care? Because she, to me, physically abuses her child, her children, her daughter. But we'll go into that one later. So, because, culture, but here, this side of difference. town, this side of the pond, we believe in at least 
you need to discipline with some few slaps. Okay. okay. I spoil, spoil the child. Okay. Okay. So, so, I mean, when people are beating children to the extent that they're, 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 they've got broken flesh, they've got broken bones, yeah. you're, you're injuring their eyes, they, their head is split open, mm -hmm. you know, you're rubbing. I was reading an article last night um, about a man who was beating his cousin using pepper to rub the private parts <laughs> and things like that. That's abuse. Is, is, that's, that's abuse. That's abuse. Yeah, that's we know that. That is, that is abuse, and that's not Extreme acceptable. Cases. So slapping is not, is this not is abuse. Not, this is not to defend these things. But when we were children, some people stopped their children from becoming armed robbers by cutting them, putting pepper. Eh? Yeah. yeah. That's how it happened. So, OK, so if, if lots, so why? If that is the case, and why that's the reality, the why do we have any Yahoo Yahoo? Why do we have any armed robbers? Because parents are condoning it. They don't see it as armed robbery. They don't see it as clear crimes. No, but if beating, if, if beating the child is, is, is the way that can make a child not right. be a criminal, then, uh, you know what, everybody okay, beat their so child. Let's, so no you're taking us to the area of domestic violence. Let's, let's, let's move there. Because <clears throat> young people get beat all the time. So since we're talking <laughs> about young people today, and... Um, I know, I, 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 I told my colleagues here that I should be arrested because a couple of weeks, a month ago, I think, I, I spanked my daughter. She lied and wanted to discipline her because it was a wrong, it was a, it was a bad lie. <laughs> So, a it's a big lie. It's a blatant, yeah, blatant lie. Okay. So I gave her the first one. I, I usually use a belt. Mm. That's not abuse. I use a belt. It and is. I use a kid's belt. It's I spanked her once, stretch out your hands. Number two, she didn't stretch it out. Unfortunately, it hit her face and it tore flesh. Mm. Now, it left a scar. I knew if I was not in the country, if I was not in Nigeria, they would be arrested me because I, I made sure she didn't go to school because the mark was right there. And the mark is probably still there till today. And when I got to school, her teachers were asking, what, what happened? happened? Because she told everybody from the security guard to <laughs> everybody, the moment I parked, they kept asking, what happened? My what happened? What happened? Beat My mommy beat me there. So in that kind of situation, it wasn't, I wasn't trying to abuse her. I was trying to discipline her. So, I would like you as a social worker, can you help us draw the thin line, that line between discipline ah, well, bless and me, abuse? Ah, and you too, say your own. Let me let him, go ahead. I think where, 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 wherever you're, where, whenever you're smacking a child and you're breaking the skin, I, I, I think that's abuse. Okay. I, I do, and I, and I stand the intention by intention was to discipline. The intention was discipline. Okay, so, okay, so, 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 so <laughs> you said spanking. Uh, for me, I think spanking is your palm against maybe the bum. <laughs> That's but the spanking they gave me. When Let's you take a the belt, the intention, the intention yeah. was discipline. It so, wasn't to abuse her. So, so if I kill somebody and I go to the judge and say I didn't really mean to to to, to kill him <laughs> and he <laughs> dies, so don't send me to jail because it it wasn't so it wasn't my intention. You will still go to jail. You will still sleep in jail. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll continue the show. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. <laughs> All right, um, we'll come back to our guests. Let me take just one comment from the audience. Go ahead, please. Yes, in, in my own view, um, suggesting that government should step up to monitor this. They are watching now. Government should step up. If they can ban rice coming to Nigeria and other things, they should ban this as well. I learned that in, uh, there are some sicknesses that needs to be treated with tramadol. So if it should be treated with tramadol, let it be prescribed by doctor. the doctor that right. is in charge, right. the dosage, everything. Right. The pharmaceutical shops where all these are being sold, yeah, let it control. be monitored strictly. Right. Thank let you very much banned, for coming. Yeah. Let's so take a few a... comments on it online. Yes. Okay, so uh, Mr. Adebayo says, I don't believe we need a robust social work as in the UK. We have our own social way we deal with things. Our family values, the community and friends are enough to deal with any social issues a child may go through. So that's to you, what do you think? And um, sorry, um, White Lion says, you really don't need to spank a child to discipline that child. There are other ways of disciplining a child, like putting the child alone in the room for some minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are all guilty, me, including me, but we need to learn. Okay, I think the, th I think the first point mm -hmm. around you don't need um, a, a, social, a robust social um, services or children's services, 
I think this guy's got it wrong. I think you do need it. Because I think you, you, you do need it. Look, look at the country, look at young mm. people today. You can't say that the community on its own is, is resolving some of these issues. You have the drug issues, you have the Yahoo issues, you know, you have young people that don't have jobs, they don't have employment and that are turning to crime. This guy is on something himself. Maybe he needs yeah. to see the. Let me take this call from uh, Abel, are you there? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Go ahead, please. Sister Murayo, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This, day, I greet you. this is my third year that I've been trying your number. Wow. wow. This is third year. Well done. Wow. Well done, lucky. Yeah. Beating a child is 50 yeah. 50 in life. Beating a child is 50 50. It's very good to beat your child. There's no, as in, there's no crime in that. Mm -hmm. I could remember when I was in Premier 4. I came home with two of my friends, eat all the food that my mom cook. And can you imagine, my mom came back from shop, I was beaten. That why did you eat all the food, this and that? They really beat me that very day. And I said, ah, but you normally cook for people at your shop, please. Now that's why I bring two of my friends, come to the house to eat. He said, no. He said, that's stealing. I said, okay, man. Ever since then, can never see me playing around for no, I'm a married man now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Abel. Let me, you go let to me, your let wife's let me go to my guest to, uh, concerning that because mm -hmm. he made a very valid point on beating here is not a big deal. You live in the UK, yep. and we hear of Nigerians. Um, family that where their kids are being taken away from them because they're this because of the same mentality. Mm. Like okay, people like Nima will go to the UK now. They move to the I'm UK. Not going to. No, no, people like Nima <laughs> will move to the UK and then they discipline their children and they get arrested and God forbid their kids are taken away from them. So I, I, as a social worker living in the UK, what how, how best can a Nigerian discipline their child, raise their child in the United Kingdom? I think I think you know, if, if you're ever coming to the United Kingdom to, to relocate or to live, you have to change your mindset. Leave because that if, if, you, if you don't change your mindset, the government will take your child. I've seen it so many times. I've had so many Nigerians that I've, I've had meetings with. I've seen so many of them in the court system and their children going to care. And once those children are in, are in there, if you cannot prove that you've changed your mindset, those children will be there in care until they're 18 or even adopted to other families. And that's how serious it is. And that's why I'm saying that a lot of Nigerians, with some of the conversations we're having, when they come to the UK, they behave that, that way. When you're in Nigeria, to an extent, you can, you can, you can behave here. How, you, how your law well, you allows you. Do you think we need to change the way we discipline children in Nigeria? Most definitely. I, do, I strongly believe that. And I think that there's a lot of education that is needed and you okay. need to invest what in it. What better options do you have for, to, to discipline a child? Because you have children, you know, they're growing so, up. The so processes. so there's, there's other, I think there was somebody that did um, a tweet or something that was talking about um, that. Locking up. Put the child. So there's time out, time out, removing. Checking um, the phones. Taking phones away from children. Um, there's Games. other things that they enjoy doing How that you use. So, so I think what it is, you have to review what your legislation is around, um, child. around child protection or children's services. You have to have something that you work together with. What, what are the agencies that you need? So, for example, in the UK, I have um, a team of professionals that I'm often in debate around Nigerian. They're all Nigerians. They all live in the UK. So people like Adiola Adekunle, Modupe Adekupa. Um, we have people like Guy DK. Um, so we have, there's a lot of us that have the debate about what it should be. So I think what it has to be, the legislation needs to be reviewed. Hmm? You have to look at that particular state, that particular area. So some areas it might be sexual abuse is an issue. Some might be emotional abuse is an issue. And it's about working in partnership Physical. to build Unfortunately, we can't take any more. Mm. We just ran out of time. But thank Ooh. you so much for sharing your thoughts on this. We definitely have to bring you back, hopefully when you're back in Nigeria. On social work? Yeah, no problem. Let us, let us know when you're around so you can oh, always bring your most top of I, I only ever slapped my child once. once thank you for confessing. That's all we can say. Thank you for confessing. Yes, on the show, our appreciation again goes to Cream Slices for a beautiful cake. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Good stuff.